My name is Aiden Quinn, center midfielder for Indy 11, number 14. Tonight, career appearance number 250 in the USL Championship. Now trying to catch him off his line! Oh my! A worldie of a goal! Kurt Aiden Quinn! The goal for Aiden Quinn! He's one of the best players in the league, I feel like. Of Aiden Quinn! Olympic this guy is easily one of the best 11 players in league history. Aiden Quinn puts it in straight from the corner flag! You know, obviously a legend in this league, and I always played against him, and I did enjoy playing against him. The second player in USL Championship history to play 20,000 league minutes. Yeah, uh, we're here talking about my injury uh, in September of 2023 last year. I ruptured my ACL, so I got a reconstruction surgery on my ACL along with the repair of my meniscus. We'll do two on each leg with the knee drive, and then we'll do one set, uh, two sets, sorry, of you doing the pattern. My name is Joshua Frankham, and I am the head athletic trainer for Indy 11. I believe it was September 12th was the, the day it happened, um, and it was very innocuous the way it happened. Aiden and one of our other Indy 11 players were running down the sideline when Aiden went to play the ball, got his planted foot stuck in the, in the turf and, and pulled up pretty much immediately. I was going for a ball, just going to chase it down. And I remember before I made contact, I think it was with Diego, I made contact with him, but before, I think I just hyperextended my leg a little bit, hyperextended my knee and must have got caught in the grass and um, I went down, I rolled around a little bit and I remember, I, I heard like a cracking. Um, and I obviously you don't know if it's good or bad, whatever happens, but I know a lot of people who go through the ACL injury, they, they hear pop, they said. Uh, I didn't hear a pop, I heard like, it felt like my whole knee cracked. We got him back into the building, did some immediate testing, um, obviously knew that something wasn't quite right. In my head, I wasn't thinking it was anything too serious. I never thought it was going to be a, a big injury, especially one to my knee, which as a soccer player, you're really hoping nothing happens because, you know, those are the, the long-term injuries and you never want to be out that long. So Aiden texted me on um, after practice and said that, I'm gonna be home later. I have to go get um, an MRI done. And I asked, oh, what happened? And he was like, oh, I think I just hyperextended my knee. Like, it's probably nothing, but I'm gonna just go get it checked. And he came home, Aiden came home, and his leg was so swollen, like so swollen. And you could tell he was like hurting a bit and Aiden, has a very high pain tolerance. And so I, I knew like instantly something was serious. He was playing it off as, oh, I just hyperextended it. I'm sure it's fine. Like I'm, it's probably nothing. Woke up though the next morning and uh, man, it was swollen. It was so stiff. I like, I remember I had to go early for the MRI. So I got up maybe six, 6.30 or something in the morning. Getting out of bed, I was, I was really limping. I was like, oh no, like couldn't put any weight on it. Uh, it blew up quite a, kind of a lot. So when I got the MRI, came to training, um, and I, th I think it was that day that I think when I got back, it was. I, th I remember the traffic from the MRI was so long. It took like an hour and a half to get back to training. And it was so I think when I got back to training before training started, Josh had I think the diagnosis, but he didn't tell me. It was a. Uh... Well, in morning, obviously I have players in here getting treatment um, and I get a phone call from the team physician who uh, gets the results for the MRI, um, to which I found out that Aiden had tore his ACL. Um, so then it was communicating that to the head coach, communi communicating that to Aiden as well as other members of the Indy 11 staff. Um, 
yeah, it's difficult conversations that you have to have with athletes and it's not something that you enjoy doing, but it's part of the job. Coach came in, said, hey, Hayden, let's go talk in my, uh, my office. So Josh came with, we talked and uh, they basically said, yeah, it's a uh, torn ACL. Um, we're gonna have you go see the orthopedic sur surgeon, but basically, yeah, it's the, your ACL's torn, your season's done. Aiden texted me that morning that he got his results and said I tore my ACL. And yeah, I just remember feeling so devastated for him. The worst feeling was me letting the team down. Um, at that point, I felt like <clears throat> it was more of, dang, like, Playoffs are coming, we're on a really good roll. We started winning games, we started playing really good stuff. For me, it was, I felt I was letting the guys down. I just felt like I was letting the club down, not necessarily because I got injured, but now I can't help out. I can't, I can't help the rest of the year. He, uh, Aiden was probably a little shocked because I don't think any of us really, really expected it to be his ACL. Um, but he was actually very positive about the situation. It, for me, it wasn't, it, it, nah, I wouldn't say it was easy, but it was like, man, that sucks. But like I said, my mindset, it's, all right, what do we do? What's the next process? Um, in my head, I'm pretty positive uh, thinker, um, or I'm, I'm all, I would say grateful. I'm grateful for everything that I've had in the past. I'm grateful for not being injured. And so in my head, it's like, all right, well, I haven't had any injuries. Like. I've been professional for 10 years now. That's pretty lucky. You got an injury now. What are you gonna do? Are you just gonna sulk? Are you gonna are you gonna feel bad about yourself? Or are you gonna are you gonna tackle it head on? And you're gonna do the thing that need to be done. Like I said, the other option is sulk and be miserable. Um, and for me, I can't do that. Um, I think that'd be selfish on my part. It'd be selfish for my family, uh, for the team, everyone else. That's why. In that moment, it was, I'm actually glad it happened to me because I know I could handle it. Um, if it happened to someone else on the team, it's like, I would feel bad because it's like, man, that sucks. They have to do all this. Um, can they do it? I don't know their mindset. I don't know them away from the locker room. Maybe they're in their apartment saying, I don't know if I can do this. Um, for me, I know I can do it. I, I'll do it. I have the support system. I have my family. I have my friends. They're all behind me. If I need something, I know who to talk to. Um, my wife, the best in the world. So I know if I need something, boom, she's right there. So for me, I was fine with it, but don't sulk, don't feel bad, don't give me sympathy, uh, but push me on, let's, let's get on with it. Yeah, Aiden and I met in um, college at the University of Akron. Um, I was a freshman and he was a um, junior. It was the first like month or two in college and so you know we went to some of the soccer games in the fall and um, he had scored a game at one of the uh, scored a goal at one of the games that um, we went to and so like akron's soccer team tweeted like oh goal by like aiden quinn and so i followed him on twitter and then he messaged me like maybe that day or the next day and yeah we started hanging out like within the week of him messaging me and pretty much were together nonstop. Uh, did she say that she followed me on Twitter after I scored a goal? Yeah, yeah, yeah she so. did say that. <laughs> so good thing I scored. Uh, <laughs> Life could look a lot different. Yeah, I mean, I feel like that was her way of saying hi, right? She followed yeah. me, I didn't follow her. <laughs> um, Aiden um, said that he had never had a girlfriend before and so I was his first girlfriend. And last girlfriend. <laughs> People always think, uh, like I love, I because I always talk high, so highly of Akron and the University of Akron and people think because I had such a good soccer career there and it was great and it was, everything like that is awesome and I met some of my best friends but the biggest thing is I met Brooke there and she's my partner in life and I've built this life with her and we've done, she's been there every step of the way in my professional career and a lot of it in college so I would say, yeah, the biggest reason I, I'm so big on Akron, but also is because I met Brooke and uh, what she's provided to me uh, as a partner. And obviously with Jovi, who's changed our lives for the, no better for sure. Jovi um, is our daughter. She is 20 months old. Go, 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 go,
go, go, go. Ah! Uh, Jovi is a little rascal. She's awesome. Um, I think she's a little too much like me. I, I think we were hoping she was she was calm and, and cool like, like Brooke, but she kind of got my personality and unfortunately looks more like me. Uh, I think she, hopefully she looks more like Brooke as she grows up. Jovi is everything that Aiden is. Um, not only does she look just like Aiden, but she has Aiden's personality as well. Um, Jovi is very strong-willed, very stubborn. Um, she is fearless. Um, she really does take after him so much. So Aiden initially tore his ACL on September 12th. He had surgery on September 28th. And surgery came. Um, it was pretty quick and easy for me. They knocked me out. I'm under anesthesia. Um, I wake up, I'm in pain, and they gave me some more meds, so I'm pretty pain, painless at that point. I remember Dr. Estes coming out after the surgery and telling me that he also tore his um, meniscus in a couple spots. Um, and I remember like my heart like sinking when he told me that because I knew, because Aiden had been talking about it all prior to the surgery that like, oh, as long as it was only my ACL, so that's good because it's a little bit shorter of a recovery time than if it was ACL and meniscus. So I had to tell him like what the doctor told me. And yeah, I could see his face just like drain almost when I told him that it was also his meniscus. Because of the meniscus injury, I wasn't able to bend my knee past 90 degrees for four weeks. So basically I had the ACL repair, I had the a reconstruction, and then I had the meniscus repair. So I was just bent or on the couch really for four weeks doing nothing uh, on crutches, no weight bearing, uh, not bending the knee past 90 degrees. So those, those are probably the hardest days because it's just like, I'm usually athletic, I'm fit, I want to do things, I like going on walks, um, I like doing these things, even if I'm not training, like I still like to be active. And that I was just on the couch, um, playing video games, I haven't played video games in years. He couldn't like help out as much, you know, as he normally, he's just, he's so helpful um, around the house and with Jovi and stuff. And so he couldn't do much because he was on crutches and then he also needed my help. So like I was trying to like juggle everything with also making sure like he got to what he needed to. It was just a lot juggling it all um, and seeing like he, you could just tell like his frustration with not being able to do as much as Aiden normally does. Now I have a one year old. So she was probably nine months around the time. So she just started walking just started like really getting mobile and I'm useless. I'm on the couch. Uh, so like that sucks for me because I, I don't get to play with my daughter, but also now my wife kind of has to take care of me. She has to take care of the baby. Um, and that at that point it's like, now I feel bad because it's, I'm not able to do my job as a soccer player, but also I feel like I'm not doing my job as a husband or as a father. And, now this load is going on to my wife where she has to pick up the load, she has to do more, and she does enough. She already does way too much for me, so it's like, ah, oh man, that, that really sucks. But again, probably the best decision of my life was getting her in my life. She's the one that has helped me in my career, but also in life, obviously. So again, like I said, uh, I had the support system, so from there I was fine. But yeah, it's hard seeing other people have to pick up where you can't do things. Those first couple months are really difficult in terms of you're pretty much, uh, you can't move for a lot of it because you're in, an, in a brace that's locked to a certain position. Um, so it, it takes a lot of mental strength to be able to get back. Yeah, so rehab, I've been, it's kind of nonstop. It's, uh, it's, doing a lot of exercises. So I go, I see a PT named Joel, uh, great, great PT. He's got me working three days a week with him. Team medical staff got a hold of me. Uh, the athletic trainer, Josh, for the Indy 11 reached out and said he was sending a player 
my direction that uh, recently towards ACL and was gonna need a surgery. So initially when Aiden came in, he had a lot of post-operative precautions. He had a lot of things that he wasn't really allowed to do because he needed to protect the surgical integrity. So he wasn't allowed to do certain elements that we would normally try to get started early in rehab. So knowing that Aiden had a long road ahead of him with this procedure, uh, we had to start off kind of slow. We had to make sure that we weren't doing anything to jeopardize any of the future recovery. A lot of it was range of motion stuff in the beginning, uh, just trying to bend the knee, trying to strain the knee. Um, it was really stiff, obviously, since I couldn't move it past 90. Uh, then it starts to get some strength, so that was a nice part, finally able to do like a workout, um, doing some high intensity stuff for, well, for me at that time, where it's doing 30 seconds, 45 seconds on, and then getting a rest for 15, 30 seconds, and then doing it again couldn't even straighten my leg. Uh, that's how weak it was. And all the muscles gone in your quad. Uh, it's, so it's crazy to see, you, I look at my left quad, normal, it's fine. I look at my right and there's no definition. I can't even flex it. Um, I have no, no muscle, I can't even flex it in my quad. So yeah, a lot of it was uh, flex your quad. That was, I had to do those exercises five times a day for 15 minutes a day, just keep flexing your quad. So the next six weeks for Aiden, while everybody else is going through preseason, is probably going to be the hardest time for him. The next six weeks for him is going to be huge in terms of we can really start ramping up his running program um, on the Alter G. Um, and hopefully, towards the end of those six weeks, get him on the grass jogging in a straight line. That would be, that would be huge. Right now, we're at 70% of my body weight. Um, at a 7.0 pace. It feels like a little jumpy, but it's nice. You can actually move it and do stuff. So the Alter G is an anti-gravity treadmill, basically. It has settings on it, so you can adjust how much weight he's bearing on his body. So you can start it at zero, which means he's basically running on air, and then progress it up till around 90, 100%, which would be pretty much full body weight. In the early stages, you don't want to push too much load through the new ACL ligament that he's got in there. So what we want to do is try and manage that load and slowly progress him up so that the, the tendon, sorry, the ligament gets used um, to the amount of load that we're pushing through it. Yeah, okay. Joel, let me borrow his, uh, his outfit for today, so it's nice. I look good. Good, yeah, got up to 8 and then 80%. Eight, 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 eight. How long were you there? Five minutes, probably. Five minutes. Thank you. Good stuff, man. Happy for you. Give him a good word. Uh, with Aiden today, he is going to get to run on the grass for the first time, which is very exciting. Um, a huge step in his rehab in the next phase. Um, for him. Um, he's going to do some warm-up stuff, some activation stuff, and then he'll get into the running aspect, which will be about 20, 25 yards, just running in a straight line, um, and then working on some just warm-up activities such as side shuffling, just to get him, get him back into the swing of things. <laughs> Alright, let's start forward lunges onto the onto the disc. Straight into it, huh? I can't have you jog to warm up, can I? <laughs> That's the main event. <laughs> How many? We'll do two sets of eight. So he said just do like five sprints at the end? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're gonna go full field. Full field. Full field sprint, box to box. So we're working on his proprioception. So having him put load through his knee whilst also trying to balance. So the picking up the cones is more of a distraction to allow him to focus on stability of the knee. We'll go double leg to start with. Good control. Now we're gonna go vertical. Really load into it. We'll go five each side. Keep the hips facing forward. Now you're gonna go off two and land on one. Off of one foot across the line. One more? Yeah. yeah. Ready? Jog. <laughs> Let's do it. All right, we're just going to go to the orange cone. Straight line. Okay, ready? Feel all right? Yep, no problem. We can start sprinting whenever you want. 
<laughs> First day, flying. Oh. I can't keep up already. Yeah. All right, and this one we're gonna do a little more like high knees. Yep. Ready? Yeah, feels fine doing that. We're gonna do some, or well, attempt some butt kicks. Butt kicks, yeah. Ready? Ready? Yep. Go. Just tight. Good and jog through. Uh, if you're comfortable, we're gonna just open it up just a little bit more. Yeah. Not too quick, just whatever a comfortable stride is. I'm not too quick anyway. <laughs> Ready? <laughs> yeah. Go. That feels fine, I just don't know if I'm like actually. Pull, yeah, proper cycle. Yeah. Yep. Good, good. All right, that's it for today. That's it? Cool, thank you. Good. We're getting there. First day on the grass, looks very good. Yeah, how long is that, four months, four and a half months? Yeah, it's pretty good. It's a long time. <laughs> it's a long time, but it's... We're, we're in the, into the good stuff now. Yep, now the fun begins. Now the fun begins, but also the worst part for you because you see them and yeah. you're over here on your own. Yeah. So like mentally it's tough to to get through that, but yeah, soon enough. We'll get you out there. Went really well. Um, for his first time out here running, obviously he's been on the, the anti-gravity and um, that's been helpful for him. Um, but this is a, it's a big step in, in the progression. Um, and hopefully he can look forward with some excitement now going into the next phase of his rehab. It's really nice to finally be able to do something that wasn't so controlled, like the anti-gravity treadmill or just doing exercises in the gym. So it was nice to be on the field doing kind of like a soccer movement, it, whether it's just straightforward running. But uh, yeah, it felt good. Uh, knee feels great. There's only a little, I feel a little restricted in when I try to pull it to my butt, I guess, but I don't think it's that far off. I think that's maybe more mentally, but it feels great. Aiden um, was supposed to start running on the Alter G in January, um, but due to complications um, along the way, that got delayed, and he actually ended up having surgery in January to uh, remove some scar tissue um, above his patella. Had a, uh, what they call manipulation under anesthesia, uh, so, wasn't getting as much flexion and extension as we would have liked at that point in January. Uh, yeah, kind of told the doctor and everyone that wasn't quite going, like it wasn't about the effort or the, the willingness to do the work. I was doing and putting the work in, but it just kind of was plateaued. And then he came back to rehab again, and we kind of had started to kind of to start back a little bit. So he mostly he was battling mobility and a little bit of pain, but pain wasn't his big issue stability wasn't his big issue, it was motion. So really mobility this whole time has been a struggle to try to get back. Uh, a lot of times he trying to get the knee fully straight is, is a battle, even though it seems like that would be normal. But if it's, if there's restrictions within the articulation of how the femur and the tibia come together and it, and it kind of like blocks your motion, then you don't have that full freedom of expression of how the joint moves. And if you don't have that full joint mobility, then you're gonna to continue to get swelling, which was gonna block motion even more. You're gonna restrict some of that when you're trying to load it more. So when you're trying to move into strength phases, it doesn't work, it doesn't operate if your joints aren't operating uh, effectively. And then that's the same thing in his inflection with him as well. So same thing when he's trying to bend his knee, he was continuing to get blocked internally. And so he didn't have that typical roll and glide. And so all the techniques that we might use joint mobilization, soft tissue, distraction forces, overpressures, prolonged holds. It was all just okay in how he was responding to it. And it's difficult to push into barriers that you can't really push through. So trying to find unique ways to do that and explore different options was, it's been a challenge for the rehab team and, and for Aiden as well, definitely. And the flexion is how, uh, how close you can, can bring it in or bend it, like kick your butt with your heel, that type of stuff. Um, and so before I was not great, I was, couldn't really quite sprint, which was a big problem, uh, kind of threw off my running gait, uh, because I couldn't get that full rotation, I couldn't get that kick up. We, we saw some improvement, but not enough improvement. Um, 
And then after getting further imaging, um, he had to have surgery again, um, this time surgery behind his patella uh, to remove scar tissue um, in that area around the Hoffa's fat pad. In between him having those two surgeries, he was on the field and able to do some running and jogging um, and get him up to um, some decent speeds and cover like good distances, but he just didn't feel right. And from a range of motion standpoint, we wanted to make sure that he was gonna be good long-term um, for his future, more so than just get him back and able to play immediately. And all along the way, you know, it ups and downs with rehab. He's, you know, it's frustrating to not just be injured, rehab, get better. Like that's what everybody wants to do. And unfortunately, that's not the case for a lot of people. And so Aiden had to weather some storms along the way, went out to California, had that procedure, came back, had a little bit of a new focus for rehab coming back again, really pushing mobility. But a lot of the time when you have that many procedures, your musculature weakens and it kind of shuts off the muscle to the quad specifically, like that connection doesn't, um, it's hard to turn the muscles back on. And so he was fighting that battle, making sure the quad would work and support some of the training that he needed to be able to do. So. <clears throat> the growth of the quad was something that we really had to focus on, not just that it would work, but it needed to be bigger, get stronger, and push in mobility all along the way too. From there, that's where we really started to see a lot of improvement. And then when he came back from that surgery, he kind of hit the ground running. Um, again, going through those phases of gaining the range of motion, but getting it a lot quicker this time. So he was able to progress pretty quickly into on field. Um, work so within two three weeks he was he was doing some running on the L2G and then back on the field within four to four to six weeks uh, being on the sidelines have been tough but good every time I'm watching a game or training it makes me want to push a little bit harder in the rehab process uh, because yeah I miss it I miss competing I miss being out there with the guys that banter but yeah, just competing every single day and then obviously on game day miss that uh those butterflies or those ex that excitement you get when you're playing uh in front of the fans but in front of your family and with the guys on your team you want a bike for me yeah i'll bike for you you're more i'm carrying the boat just while you come back but... i don't know if i can ride harder you know so today Aiden is back on the grass running for the first time since surgery for the third time. Um, he's just going to go through a nice little re-entry session, try and do some running and then some technical work. It'll be interesting to see how it goes. He's been having a, a little bit of uh, quad pain, so we'll, uh, we'll see how the loading aspect of it goes. There's a chance that he may have some pain yeah. with it, but hopefully, fingers crossed, everything goes well and he's able to get through the session. Nice. Felt fine now? Knee feels good? Yeah. No quad pain or anything? No. no. Feels all right. Okay. We're well, going to start off nice and easy. You'll be in that box. I'm going to play into you, take a touch, find a goal. And again. Oh. You okay? Yeah, quad. Ooh. Landed funny? No, I think I went over it. Oh, wow, that hurt. That's a quad though. It was higher up. Yeah. Take your time. Think of that. Try to go over. You think you like turned at a funny angle? Like as you were planted? Yeah. Push too much weight. Maybe. Let's see. Just take it easy. Just roll them in. You yeah. don't need to fire them. It's like tight. 
That's where your IT band is, and then you've got your lateral quad that runs right by there. It hurts you. Is it hard? Like, yeah, it's just tight. Every time I take a step, it, I feel it. Like sharp or just like dull and achy? Sharp when I land on it. Okay. Yeah, that's not good. All right, let's call it. There's no point making it worse. That was probably the first day it actually like got to me, like got to my head. Three surgeries and first day back on the field, boom, you feel something that doesn't feel right. Like even when he did tear his ACL, like this was worse, I think. You want every day to go great, but you know not every day is going to go that way. How long has it been? Ten months. Ten months? Yeah, bro. There's a side also that, that when you're coming back that you need to get over a mental barrier and a, and a, and a few of them were, were me not breaking him because I don't want to break any player but like putting him in an area where he didn't know what was coming next. There's a lot of people that uh, put a lot of effort and hard, hard work into it. It wasn't just me so this is a big victory I think for all of us.